Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Hey. 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 Are you getting that feedback? No. All right, good. Are you? No. <laughs> I'm just making that up? Yeah, of course. Where are you, in D.C.? I'm still in D.C. Had a very interesting day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How's the weather over there? Oh, right now? Mm, 95. Really? Right now. You would love it. Super muggy outside? Oh, it's crazy. Crazy hot. I took a huge run at like 11 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock in the morning here. I ran from my hotel to the Washington Monument to the Jennifer, just Jefferson Memorial to the Lincoln Memorial back to the White House. Or, it's, kind of, it's surreal. You know? Really? Yeah. Wow. It's like it's some, some sort of uh, espionage movie. Yeah, right. Did you make the drop at each one of the sure. memorials? Yes, I made the contact. Yes. Oh, sure. okay. Good. Yeah. Sorry. And, uh, in fact, it's funny. I was, I was outside the White House today. I was driving by and uh, the president's Cavalcade came by, you know, car, you know, this, this. I think it's called a uh, motorcade. Motorcade, there you Cavalcade go. Cavalcade would be the like horses. a Bob Hope. Yes. <laughs> would have a bunch of celebrities. <laughs> and uh, to uh, welcome like the 1972 college all-star team. That's right. That'd be a Cavalcade. But, That's uh, a Cavalcade. It's kind, of, it's kind of, you know, weird. You're sitting outside the White House and the president drives by. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, no big deal. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh. You know, uh, I, I took a tour of the White House once. Oh, that's I, right. Yeah. I wonder if they're, uh, I, you know, and I hid in a dumbwaiter. Mm. And I uh, banged the uh, bejesus out of Hillary Clinton oh. in the middle of the night. But she thought it was Bill. And she really? was like fresh, you know, and I yeah, really got it on with her. Yeah. I, I, I hadn't talked about it for years, but I figure it's safe to talk now. Are right, you ready to uh, roll yeah, here, Drew? Oh, good time. Did I give the uh, board certified and all that crap? I I'm sure you did. And uh, the phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. All righty. Katie. Yes? Hey, Drew, you know what I was about to do? Yeah. I was right. uh, had my finger poised over the button from the post-it from two nights ago <laughs> to punch up the screen. And you held back. No, I didn't hold back. You just punched uh, uh, Katie up. <laughs> we explained this last night, but I, I, I think let me put Katie on hold for one second. I think people sometimes when you're uh, listening to a radio show like to sort of picture what's going on or how it works in here. And uh, I won't take up too much time, but we have a uh, there's two pieces of equipment that are worth a uh, rat's hindquarters in this uh, room. One is a uh, flat TV monitor or uh, computer monitor. And the other is two nice uh, leather chairs, both of which were not provided by Westwood One. Mm -hmm. And have nothing to do with Westwood One. Drew, what is the first thing I said when I saw that nice new flat TV slash video slash computer monitor well, on well, first, our desk? First What's the were, first thing I said? Well, first you were confused. Like, well, wait a minute. What, this can't... Wait, this does... Oh. Okay. This okay. was built this in this is, decade. Right. Well, that's who, right. Where, where did this come from? Who right. provided this? That's right. Even though we work at Westwood One, I saw a new piece of state-of-the-art equipment in here and was confused. Yeah. Yeah. And I processed it for a minute and I said, well, where did this come from? A Lycus listener? Who? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. How did these get in here? Just right. like you would say if you saw these nice leather chairs in here. What are those doing in here? Yeah. Well, of course... They were provided by our listeners, and this TV screen is probably a, a Tom Likas item. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever the story behind this screen is, it has nothing to do with Westwood One, of course, because uh, what they have the TV, you know the TV they use, the monitor they use is the one that uh, Lucy took the guts out of and poked her head through for that <laughs> famous episode. Yeah, That's the it, one they normally it, use. It, it definitely has tubes. <laughs> yeah, well, no, Lucy pulled the tube out. We're actually, no, oh, actually physically looking Lucy's at... Lucy's decayed head is still Lucille in Lucille Ball's yeah. rotting corpse <laughs> okay. is what they normally have. Okay, that's nice. All right, but we have a screen in here, and they have all the calls uh, printed up on there, line one through six, and Drew puts a little post-it, a little post-it uh, yellow sticker when he sees a call he likes, and that's the one I punch up. Now, ironically, that post-it sticker usually falls off. Within uh, four or five minutes, sometimes making things confusing in here. But the one that Dr. Bruce stuck on from three nights ago is still <laughs> there. And I am so Pavlovian that even with Drew not in the studio, and even though I did it last night, 
when I look up and I see the post-it on line five, my finger goes for line five. Right. And, and if that post-it was there every day for another four years, I would punch up line five. <laughs> you see, no, I do my job. We're going for line two. Katie? Yes? You're 16. See, when, I'm, when I'm outside the studio, I punch up the lines from a computer. Uh, that's outside, right. So. That's, the, that's the part we we're missing. Go ahead, Katie. Well, I've been on my period for three years, and me and my boyfriend were thinking about having sex, but um, I wanted to know if if it's more, like, effective to have the Depo Vera shot or the birth control pill. Neither is more effective. They are both extremely effective at preventing pregnancy. The thing about the shot is that you don't have to remember to take it all the time. And the pill, you've got to take it at the same time every day without ever missing, or the effectiveness goes down. Okay. Um, does, now, does either have any like side effects? Yeah, they both have lots of side effects, and you have to think about what kind of side effects you're willing to tolerate. Well, they they both don't have a lot. When you say the well, depo they both, has I beg more, your pardon. they have some side effects. That that the, the well, the estrogen progesterone pills tend to have a little bit of the weight gain. Sometimes your breasts will get bigger. Sometimes yeah. you get a little moodier. Uh, people don't like that. The progesterone, the the shot, the depo provera, can make you moody, depressed. It will make you bleed for three months. You'll have your period for three months continuously, and then the next shot from then on, you won't have any bleeding. You'll lose your period altogether. And people get bugged by that sometimes. Katie? Yeah? You're 16, but you sound like a young 16. Like an eight-year-old 16. Well, anything something happen when you're eight? Yeah. No. Nobody? When your parents break up or something? Um, almost dead, but... What happened? Well... It was just a little thing, and now we're trying to move because my mom and my dad want to get our family back together or something. What, was the, what, what broke the family apart? My dad, basically. What did he do? he just always did whatever he wanted to, and so he decided he wanted to move to Kentucky, and he just one day sat down and said, I can't be with your mother, but my mom really wanted to be with him, so now we're moving up there to Kentucky. Did he do anything off, you know, has he been real aggressive around you, or does he drink? Uh, no, not at all. Never He's got a anything. drink, that's why, that's the only reason to move to, to Kentucky. Well, I mean, you have to Adam, like Adam, from Florida. Oh, okay, so okay. What, what would that be considered, a lateral move? Lateral move, yeah. 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 All right, so uh, I would, uh, for someone like young Katie, I would recommend the Depo shot. I think so. It sounds that way to me. I'd actually recommend not having sex. I, I really try to make decisions for people, but there's one I'd make for her. I was about ready to punch up line five, true, and then I, uh, I really pull realized. It, pull that thing down. I just did. Uh. I just did. I guess I could have done it last night. Jesse? Yeah, hi. You're 24. What's up? Yeah, I'm. first of all, I really like the show, and you guys have really helped me out. I'm really glad to talk to you. Thank oh, you. Cool. Great. Hi. Um, well, I've been dating this guy for two months. He's my first boyfriend, and when he fingers me and gives me oral sex, it really hurts. And I think I'd like to have sex with him later, and um, I don't know how I can possibly have sex with him if it hurts so much what we're doing right now. And how I wanted to know if there are any exercises that we could do. No, wait, 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 wait. How does the oral sex hurt? How does, how does he cause the pain? What I think he's doing, he's doing the finger and the oral sex simultaneously. Sometimes, sometimes he does them separately, but the oral sex, it like, it's, I feel like a, like a pressing and like a chasing, and it just hurts. I don't know what it is. It's got a cat's tongue. Yeah, that are just kind of <laughs> a little too aggressive here. Is, is he pushing too hard? Um, I don't know. I've never had it done before. I don't know what's, what's supposed to be. I tell him to just, you know, go slower, but it still hurts. 24 well, years old. Yeah. What's up, baby? Oh, I know. I've I've had an eating disorder, so I haven't, and so and I've just gotten out of recovery, and so this is my first boyfriend. And I've actually felt, you know, kind of, you know, comfortable with somebody touching me. So what was, what was your drug of recovery from eating disorder, or recovery from drug addiction? For eating disorder. Okay. Were you a big gal in high school? Um, yeah, I always thought so. But you no, never no, were. No, no, no. Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I'm not bigger than usual. I, I always felt big. You know, you know, I, fi I find uh, ironic about this show, Drew. Mm. We talk to chicks that are uh, 108 pounds who think they're obese, mm -hmm. and then we talk to chicks that are like five three, 185, and think, oh, well, yeah, okay. sturdy, sturdy build, yeah, yeah, sturdy no build. big deal. And I, I don't. And when I say 185, I know that doesn't that doesn't sound like a almost like a punchline or a comedic answer. But I'm just being serious. We, yeah, we, that's those are the numbers. 
Yeah, we talk to we talk to girls all the time. It's like, are you a big gal? Uh, no, one eighty. You know, average. You know, a little little sturdier. It's like five wow. five two. <laughs> five two one eighty. I wish I was that big when I was playing uh, B football in high school. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, Jesse, uh, maybe, uh, and you've never been with a guy, so you don't know. Is, is this, is, has this guy been with some women? Um, yeah, yeah, he has. And, uh, but you, you have really nothing to compare his technique to, right? No, no, I just assume that he knows what he's doing. Cause he's no, normal. Don't make the, never make that assumption about a man. I think I think it sounds like he's doing something that he needs some direction about. I don't know and if he's uh, implementing my uh, velvet buzzsaw or my carpet bombing technique. Those I, need I'd to be explained to carefully. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing, he may she, you may still have a hymen, and he may be using his fingers and pushing up against that, and that can be Wait, painful I sometimes. I thought that there's no way that I can have a hymen if I'm 24. It's not typical. It's not typical, but it's not no way. Yeah. And that might be a little problematic for you. Yeah. Hey, if that if that hymen still is uh, in place, uh, you could uh, fetch a pretty penny on the uh, Arab black market. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah, I'll think about that. Do you, <laughs> do you have do you have blue eyes? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, oh, your price just went up fifty grand. Oh man, what I could get for you. But Jesse, don't worry about you. It's not about you. you what's I, I'll tell you the one thing you need to exercise is the is practice asserting yourself telling him what feels good what doesn't and directing him that's the exercise you need to do ah those whack herb males what dynamite dynamite guys hey, Adam, i'm going to give you the opportunity you've been waiting for all evening yes. press number five. Oh, <laughs> hold on i'm going to put the sticker back up <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you can't push it i'm going to put the post-it back up there all right oh let me see well the uh, trusty post-it says, line five, Samantha. Yes. You're 27. Mm-hmm. What's up? Um, for about a year now, my husband and I have been swinging, I guess you would call it, with, an, with another couple and also meeting other couples. And I'm wondering, obviously it's something he initiated, which seems to be the case in every couple that we've ever met that the guy starts it out yeah absolutely yeah and the women just tolerate it well the women's the the party line for the women is is we 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 but eventually yeah. they get an ass full of we and they start calling it what it is which is he he kind of wanted to do this he, he's a sex addict. and i went along with him yeah th these guys are sexual compulsives yeah yep now, do you, so when, you swing, anyway. when you swing when you swing are you having uh, sex with the guy too I haven't. You haven't? No, and it took us mm, a good 10 months for him, and he's only done it once. The, your husband? Yeah, we haven't swapped. He's only swapped that one time, and I didn't want to. So the, the swinging is basically you and the chick getting it on, and the guy's just hanging out? No, well, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of girl. more foreplay type things and yeah, but using toys and things like that. Yeah, but you said that uh, your husband got it on with the other girl once, mm -hmm. and uh, the other guy never got it on with you. Mm -mm. So how much, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, doesn't that just sort of distill down to you screwing around with the chick? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I, you do different things, blindfold a person and, you know. And all of you converge on the person? Yeah, or, yeah. Okay, right. Right. It Listen, sounds like life yeah. in the fast lane, right. baby. I but, uh, Whatever it is, aww. you don't want to do it. It's uncomfortable for you. It is definitely unhealthy for your relationship. We, we have talked to swingers, Adam and I, who feel satisfied when they do this, and they both are equally into it, and there's sort of a mutuality in going after this lifestyle. And I, I can't say it's never, ever something that somebody can't get some degree of gratification for, but it is very, very dangerous for relationships, and they very, very rarely survive it. you have any kids? No. Oh, good. Don't have any kids. <laughs> That's your first rule. No kids. All right. So, no. look, if you don't want to do it anymore, don't do it. Well, I think, I, well, I'm wondering if partially why I haven't wanted to do it is because I haven't been attracted to any of the men that we've met. Well, you don't want to do it because you're not a male. You're not a male sexual compulsive. Yeah. And he, he is into this. He's into novelty and difference and lots of women. And, and that's not a good thing for your relationship. And I don't, and think, uh, I don't think that maybe she doesn't want to be attracted to the other guy. Because no. if a woman is attracted to the other guy, Drew, yeah. if you are a couple and you have another couple that you start swinging with consistently, 
Stop that, Drew. <laughs> Punching up other calls while I'm talking. Okay. And here's the reason. And, Drew, I know you get into that where you go, oh, well, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but the people start, yeah, I hear people in the background, in the middle of my rants, go, hello, oh, I'm on. Wait a I minute. That's why yeah. so it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. If, if a couple, if you're having consistent swinging sex with another couple and your woman is starting to, uh, is attracted to that guy, she will fall in love with this guy. Yes, that's right. There's no way a woman can have sex with a guy, you know, once a week, twice a month, whatever it is, over the course of some time, who she's attracted to and not start falling for him. So maybe Samantha, you know, Maybe it's best that she's not attracted to these guys, and maybe she's stopping herself from it because she knows uh, she would stray, although I don't know how you cheat when you're already cheating. But I want to say one more thing, Drew. Yeah. We, are you listening to me? I was just thinking how incredible it is now. We live in a time when women, could, all their preoccupation is, how do I get this guy and how do I keep him happy? What do I have to do to keep him and keep him happy? So I'll do anything. That's, re that's recalculous. Thank you. Okay, you're done? I'm done. Wait, you, wait, your wife's listening? Is your wife No, I, I really, I, I've been talking to a lot of young people out here in Washington, and I'm oh, carrying no. a lot of this, uh, well, you know, this is what, um, how do you keep a guy to get a guy happy? It's like, you know, it's great. Listen to what you want. Anyway, You're talking ahead. to young people. I, don't, I try not to talk to you. I know you don't. I know. I just try to talk to the beautiful people. All right, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah so now here's the thing about the swinging. We have talked to swinging couples who we have uh, given the uh, love line seal of approval to. Mm -hmm. Not many, but once in a while. I'd say one. Okay, <laughs> one, fine. <laughs> I, th I think we're, we're both thinking of the same couple. Yeah, and yeah. even then, you know, if we uh, scratch that lotto ticket just a little bit beneath the surface, we could probably dig something up. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the point is, is this. I, I, uh, it's like uh, what the doctors say with smoking. It's bad for you. It can kill you. It can cause problems. But you know what? There's always the story of the uh, person that smoked three packs a day well into their 90s and never had a problem. Yep. So when a doctor tells you not to smoke, you could come back with, well, what about that one person that smoked three packs a day and made it into their 90s? But here's what the doctor's doing. He's playing the odds. Really, odds that are very much in one direction. Yeah, just like the smokers. Yes. And what Drew is saying when he tells you, ah, don't swing or don't get into heroin or don't do this or don't do that with your lifestyle is, is you're probably not going to make it. You're not going to be the one guy who smoked three packs and made it to his 90s. Don't mm -hmm. count on that. Mm -mm. All right. Thank you. Yes. Drew, what'd you do? Pick up a Rubik's Cube or something? What's going on over there? Why? What'd you, what'd you hear? You got like an Etch-A-Sketch or an Ant Farm. There's something, there's something you're, you're preoccupied. I, I really, I just leaned back. I mean, I've got a kind of novel equipment here I'm trying to manage, but... Uh, okay, but no, you it. understand, for me, you have to sound like you're listening, even if that doesn't make a sound. Oh, okay. Let's God. try it. You I must, oh, wrong one. Let's try I'm, it right now. I must now. feel like I'm listening. Let's try it for a second. You want to try okay. it? Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, this heated sofa, this is a... This is no, a... My, this is a dynamic breakthrough. This is going to make me rich. I will retire, literally and figuratively, on my heated sofa. Oh, I'm listening. Tell me more. Shh, shh. I want to hear you listening okay. without okay. hearing okay. you. Got it. Okay. Ready? And go. Go. Okay, I give that yeah. like a seven and a half or an eight. Right. Well, well that's, that's about some effort. Some that's the effort I was putting out. Not that bad. Was it. Not I, bad. I, I was Not going bad. for ten. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's a little early in the show to peak. Yeah. Silent listening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's okay. speak to Mario. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi. You're 25. Hey, yeah, hang on a second. Mar Mario, Mario, hang on one second. Read the, read the question, Adam. He, uh, I asked... Uh, How does he... Yeah. I asked Terry, don't call me Tar, goddammit, to have him spell one of these words. Go ahead. Read it. Okay. How does he tell a girlfriend of three weeks that he's into bondage and fado <laughs> maso? <laughs> Masochism. Yeah. Fado masochism. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's missing the S there. Well, I had him spell it for her, and that's how we spelled it. Oh, you're into fatal masochism? <laughs> uh, bonded discipline, fatal masochism. Fatal masochism. There he is again. Yes. Where are you from, Mario? I'm from Chicago. Where are you from <laughs> before that? I've always been in Chicago. Oh, that's, uh, that's where you were born? Yeah. And, and what is your ethnicity? Um, Mexican-American. Okay. So, you're into fado masochism? Yes, I am. All righty. Let's, yeah. uh, and uh, do, you, do, you, do you ever tell somebody, uh, suck you? <laughs> I mean, when you're mad and you're driving? When I'm what? 
you're driving, some guy cuts you off, you tell him to uh, suck off? Adam, Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him about that. Okay. All right, I try one more, one more thing right. with you, Mario. Yeah. Um, the word, uh, the two car manufacturers of uh, Sweden, Volvo, oh. Volvo and Saab. Yeah. Repeat those back to me, please. Volvo, Saab. Okay, yeah, that worked. That's close it. enough. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Unlike my barber who says uh, Bobo and Sob. <laughs> like, Sob. Oh. Yeah, Bobo and Sob. Those are the way oh. he pronounces it. Like, <laughs> listen, you jackass. I'm born and raised in this country, so. Okay, buddy, looking good. Yeah. So, what's yeah. up? You're into the bondage scene. Yes, I am. And uh, I've been dating this girl for about, yeah, about three weeks. And um, we, we have a pretty good relationship going. Mm -hmm. And... For the most part, no secrets. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much keeping this one secret from her because uh, I'm afraid of how she's going to react. Right. And th th now this is a life for you, but you wouldn't call yourself a uh, Phaeton worshiper, would you? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I am a Phaetist, but not a Phaeton worshiper. <laughs> a Phaetist is the person that uh, makes oh, the pain. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That what? That makes the give pain. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think he got it that time. No, a fetus it. is? Yes. Fetus? Okay. There's a difference between a sadist and a fetus? A sadist and a satanist, there's a big difference. I think he's got the S back in here. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm hearing it. Okay, well, for, right. for, for, for the sake of confusion, let's forget Satan or Phaeton and just start calling him Fusifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's actually my puppy's name. Your, your puppy's name is Fusifer? Lucifer, yes. Oh, okay, Lucifer. all right, all right. <laughs> you, ever see, you ever see that show, I Love Fousey? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Go all right. ahead, uh, go ahead. But, Mario, listen, are you having sex with this girl? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we are. There's sort of a qualifier. We're, we're taking it kind of slow, you know, so it's just... All right, we'll take it slow. What, what's the, what are you going to rush into the, the sadomasochistic stuff for if you're just beginning a sexual relationship with her? You can't, right. can you not, can you not function sexually without that? Oh, no, I, I can function perfectly. Without but, it? But I'm saying, yeah, without it. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that I want to rush her into that lifestyle. I just basically want to let her know. But What's I don't know, I'm kind of worried that she might break up with me. Or what is the hurry? What is the hurry? No, there's no hurry. The problem is, well, it's not really a problem. The situation is that, I don't know, I like, I like to be active in this lifestyle. And because I respect her and care for her, I'm trying not to. Are you bisexual at all, Mario? No, not at all. Okay. No. All right. no. What, what part yeah. are you into? The uh, the masochism or the sadism or, or fatism? I'm, or, uh, I'm a, I am a master, so I am, a, I am more into sadism. What's going to happen if she just is not into this at all? I don't know. The topics never come up. But what if it comes up and she is not into it at all? Listen, what a retard. I know. What if she's not into this at all? I don't know. The topics never come up. <laughs> don't you get the... That's where the what if part comes in there. I know. It's like, it's like what, if you, what if you said to him, like, well, what if you get fired? What will you live on? I don't know. I've not been fired. That's, that issue's never <laughs> come up. But that that's more than concrete thinking. That's yeah. uh, that Smash. is that that is con you know that's steel reinforced concrete <laughs> thinking. Re rebar. <laughs> hey Mario. Yeah. Listen here, goofball. You if you're into her, that might mean curtailing some of the uh, bizarre lifestyle choices you may have made. You understand? And yeah. It, and if not, then maybe you weren't that into her. But don't don't rush it on her. Take it slow. And uh, you know what you might want to do? You might want to just uh, have a little uh, straight sex with her and give her a little tap on the ass. You know, a little rough trade. I haven't met a woman yet that doesn't respect a little of that. You know what I'm saying, Drew? You, you build into it. Whatever you say, Adam. I'm, I'm listening. Uh -huh. Seven and a half percent. Uh -huh. Seven and a half on a scale of ten. These guys. Drew, I, is, there any, is there anybody you've ever met who's into this stuff that's just not a whack job? Well, yeah, it, it's it's an issue. It's it's an it's an acting out, and, and, and usually it's an acting out of childhood uh, physical yeah. trauma. And it, and let me explain something to everybody. People, when they see you in your goth nonsense or your sadomasochism, fatomasochism nonsense or whatever other nonsense that you happen to be into, 
we don't discriminate against you because we don't like the goth scene or the fado masochism scene. <laughs> we are repelled by it because we look at you and realize something's wrong with you. Well, and that's it, what it, repels it, us. The, the feeling, they evoke feelings in us. By, by They're projecting stuff out. Yeah, well, but even if you just look at them, you go, as a human being, you realize this person, there's something wrong with them, let's steer clear of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, look at it this way, Drew. It, you know, you smell things before you eat them, sort mm -hmm. of instinctively, because mm -hmm. you want to know if they're bad. Mm -hmm. You want to know if they could bring any harm to you. Right. Is this fish bad? Is this meat bad? Has something gone bad? Could this do harm to me? You inspect things before you put them into yourself. And I think you do that with people, too. Yep. And you don't know what the hell's gone wrong with this um, pimento loaf that's been in your fridge for a couple of weeks. All you know is you ain't eating it. You, you smell trouble. That's right. And when I see that pimento loaf dressed up in a goth outfit, then I'm out. You know what? I just see a pimento loaf and I'm out. You don't need to see it goth out? No, don't even have to see it goth With the pancake no. makeup? No, and the don't even need the black fingernails or anything. Nothing? Pimento loaf. You know when they I'm black out, out the uh, pieces of olive? I'm out. Okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, Drew. Yeah. Baby Ruth Bars. <laughs> I'm going to eat every one of those goddamn things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got 50,000 watt flames. Oh, 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 drop trowel. Oh, 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 drop trowel. Oh, 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 oh. Nail the fat bitch. Oh, oh. Bro, oh, dude, bro. Oh, I can tell you, but I have to kill you. Oh, oh. All right. That's radio, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Drop trowel. <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh, dude, you're gay. Dude. Oh. All right. That sounds like a man show. Yeah. Somebody was uh, talking to me and Drew about doing some uh, morning radio. Yeah. And I just want you to know, Drew, that uh, if, you know, if that ever goes down, there's going to be about five hours of that every day. No, no. In fact, I was thinking you could bring Bertram back. You could bring the characters yeah. come back. It'd be great. I'll check in with the leather, with the uh, weather yeah. lady, and uh, yeah. but Drew, it's going to be a lot of dry, drop trowel. Oh. <laughs> no way, it can't yeah. be. Oh, it cannot be. Oh, I'll tell you, but I have to kill you. Oh. It, it can't be. Oh, dude, oh man, dude, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the show's going to be, Drew. No. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. We're going to be uh, spinning some like uh, 38 special and come back and doing a lot of local spots. I'm going to have you like at a uh, big O tire and alignment center on Saturday, handing out condoms, you know, for like 400 bucks, huh? Good, good times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was hang on loosely. Oh, 38 special. Oh, yeah, dude, bro, guy, ball. Oh. Are you ready to go here, Drew? Yeah, I think I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tina. Yeah. You're 24. Yeah. What's up? Um, I'm 24 and I've never had an orgasm, and it's getting really frustrating mm -hmm. with the um, current boyfriend I have. Yeah. Wait, wait. You you've done it before, but just not with him. No, I've never had one ever. Oh. Ever. And I've tried everything. I've had vibrators. I've had the current guy I'm with is so patient with me and so wanting to help me fix this. But you're still angry with him. No, I'm not angry with him at all. Dude, I'll tell you, you haven't tried me because the second I dropped trial, oh, look out. Oh. Is, uh, are you on any medication? Um, I'm on the pill. R which one? Uh, Desigen. Okay. Huh? What's that one, Drew? Uh, what's in that one? It's, I know it's a monophasic Le one. Levonogestrel? I don't know. It's like the same pill the whole month. Okay. Well, is he giving you oral sex? Yes. Is he doing a good job? Yeah, he is, and I'm trying to tell him what's what's good and what's not, and yeah, and it just seems like I mean we, I part of the reason I'm calling is because we just tried and failed again. Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> um, you look at like a scaling um, uh, El Capitan. Yeah, <laughs> since like Mount Everest, like in making a winter assault with no yeah. oxygen. Yeah, we tried and failed once again. We made base camp around her thigh, <laughs> but the weather got bad around her vagina. And we had to turn back to her knee until it blew over. The jerk has uh, abandoned us. Uh, yeah, one of the Sherpas got spooked when she queefed and headed back to her toe. 
All right. All right. How much, what percentage of our listeners know what uh, Sherpas are, uh, Drew? Zero. Okay. All right. Uh, well, yeah. hmm. are there anything anything we should know about that might be suppressing your ability to do this? Any no. trauma or abuse or anything like Nothing. that? And how long have you, been, have you been sexually active? Um, since I was 20. 20. And are you able to communicate with this guy what you yes. like and don't like? Yes. And have you ever, did you ever masturbate or have you ever masturbated? I've tried. Or what it, happens with that? Nothing. <coughs> nothing you, happens. Zero. Yeah. Teen no arousal. It's like I totally lose interest. It's like, you know... Just, it, it, to a, I, I swear to God, every time a male hears a woman say something like that, he hears Charlie Brown's teacher. I'm going to make a quick prediction about Tina here, Drew. Mm-hmm. Not into pot at all. Hmm. At all. Okay. What do you think of that? I think that's a brilliant, brilliant deduction. Tina? Not true. You're into oh. pot? Well, I mean, I used to. In college, I did. I, have, I've, I haven't really recently, though. Hmm. How long ago in, well, in high school? You mean in college you tried pot or no. you were into it? No, I did. I, I was. I went to school in Santa Cruz. You Ooh. smoked. You smoked a lot of weed. Yeah, a decent amount. Um, oh. hmm. Interesting. Now I'm baffled. Are you? Uh, how, how long have you been on the pill? Um, two years. And how long have you been sexually active? Four years. And before you went on the pill, same thing. Nothing. Yeah. Sexually active at age twenty, huh? Right. Why? Why so late? Um. Well, no, I was. I just not, I lost my virginity at twenty. Why? <laughs> um, okay, hold on. That's totally <laughs> different then. Why so late? Why age twenty? Well, it was. I wanted to be the right guy. I wasn't yeah. going to jump in anything. All right. Mm-hmm. You just wonder if there's any any connection. Are you are you one of these people that's sort of in control a lot or doesn't mm. doesn't lose it? Doesn't cut loose? No, no, no. Because Are you he, you're going what? into the sex with this sort of uh, let's give it another try. All right, I'm uh, you know uh, all systems go kind of mentality. You, you know what I mean? Right. And I I don't think that's the right place for you to be in to find that orgasm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I what it is is you you should go into sex with uh, this this mindset. You're into the guy and you want to share this experience with him. Um, and and orgasm or not, you're going to have a good time. Doesn't that, that thought kind of scare you, though, Tina? No, oh, wait a minute. I'll punch your man. Does that thought scare you, Tina? No. The sharing with you, the intimacy. You've never been abandoned? No, not at all. Okay. okay. All, right. all right. Well. I mean, so do you think we should go to, like, therapy? Or no, like- no, no, no. No. You know what? Just have a glass of red wine and, uh, like, uh, put on some... Uh, uh, Barry White. Some Barry White. <laughs> and just try to get out of your, get out of your head a little bit. Yeah. You don't go in with the orgasm mission. Right. It's not, it's not a mission. Yeah, it's, it's I, uh, let me tell you how I go in uh, to uh, sex, Drew. Asleep. I don't even think about the orgasm. I'm like, all right, baby, we're going up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to think. It's already what over happened? by the time you... <laughs> what happened? <laughs> by the time you have a thought. My penis went off like a party favor. What's going on? <laughs> Anna? Yeah? <laughs> of course, I have to drop trial first. <laughs> You're 16. Who did you hear talk about dropping trial? I, 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 about about six years ago, every bad hack DJ in a bad hack comic sort of, maybe it was eight years ago, sort of hung on to that drop. They latched on to that drop trial line, which <laughs> to me, if you don't make up a line, you can't use it. Right. It's no good if somebody else says it. Do you know what I mean? It's not yours. Yeah. Anna? Yes. What's up? You're 16. Yeah. You got something to ask us? Yeah, I wanted to know if you think that I should see a therapist for um, this reason. When I was, like, seven years old, I was, like, this guy. He was, like, 40 or 50 or something. He stuck his hands in my vaginal area. And my friend thinks I should see a therapist. How long did, how long did that go on for? It was, like... It was only for one day, and... Like one second on one day? No, it was like ten minutes. And what was he monkeying around? What was he doing? Well, I went into the backyard, and he was, like, painting our house. Uh. And so he grabbed me, and he was saying stuff in Spanish. I don't know what it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> he started kissing me all over, and he put it really? in my Ooh. pants. Age seven. Well, listen, I, I don't... You know me. I love the Mexicans, Drew. 
to be fair to him, in his homeland of Mexico, a seven-year-old's considered a spinstress. That's an yeah. older woman. You're right. Okay? They usually date four, four and five-year-olds. So yeah. he didn't know if you were single, if you are spoken for. He probably thought you were divorced and had a couple of kids. Let, let's not hold it against him is what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I'm, that shouldn't... I, did it freak you out at the time? I mean, did you run away crying or... I didn't know what to do. I was, like, in shock. But, yeah. like, when he was done, I went, I ran back into the house, and I was, like, crying and everything. Yeah. But I never told my parents. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, if, if Drew's dad had found out about this, like, with your, si your sister, Drew, when mm -hmm. she was seven, he would have uh, ran out there and demanded that he paint the trim for free. Am I right, Drew? That's so funny. <laughs> Am I right? I, I mean, look, the damage has been done. The house still needs to be painted. I, I'm not saying he's a rational man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I, don't, I don't think this is the cause of your problems in life. Well, it's yeah, not a great it's thing. Don't get me wrong. a great thing. A little therapy probably wouldn't hurt, but right. whatever you got going wrong in your life, this is, might account for 5% of it, but the other 95% is something else. We do you sort of arrested at eight. The feeling that you, you stop developing because of the serious trauma. I'm sure that it freaked you out. I'm sure it gives you sort of weird feelings about men. I'm sure there's aspects of that experience that are still sort of residually left behind in your brain chemistry that probably cause you to react in ways that are exaggerated, maybe when you're stressed uh, in relationships with men. And that can be helped in therapy. But it probably also will work itself out with time, too. Now, and what did your parents do when you told them about this? I didn't. You just ran in crying, saying what? I did I went into my room and I started crying and they See, didn't that, even, I never told them why I was crying. That part actually troubles us more than anything. That you couldn't go to your parents, that you were afraid to, that, that kind of thing. That's, yeah. says something about the parents. And, yeah. He right. was kissing you like on the mouth or? No, like he lifted my shirt up and he was like kissing my chest and my neck and my cheeks and all that. Wow. wow. That's seven. It was just, oh. Just lucky to monkey or something. Anna, Anna, this, uh, I will this. You're going to be okay. You'll be fine. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Although I heard a smoke, smoke alarm. Battery. Yes. That's not a good, that's the worst sign so far. Is that the battery for a smoke detector? What? Oh, bad answer. Now, see, normally we would say, well, we must be wrong. I mean, if the person who lives in the house doesn't know what we're talking about with the battery for the smoke detector, then it surely can't be the battery for the smoke detector. But you know what? We've been right every time, Drew. I know. Oh, now that's something else. What is that? Oh, that's like this thing that's in my room. It goes off. Okay, she commanded that one. Boy, I'll tell you, you should write short stories, Anna. I, mean, I just close my eyes and, 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 and it opens up to me. That's a thing in my room that goes off? It's like a little clock. What's it for? I don't know. It's my sister's. Okay. It, it, is it an alarm clock? I guess. Okay. Listen, uh -huh. Drew, this is, what I this is what I tell you about women with their get complaining about getting 70 cents on the dollar. <laughs> complaining? I think that's generous. They never know what the F is going on around them. What's going on? I don't know. It's a thing. I don't know. what. It What's your dad do? I don't know. He does something with um, um, your, your dad's Chuck Yeager. Yeah, yeah. I think he's like, uh, he works at the airport. I'm not sure. Maybe baggage? The, the, no, uh, the airplane station. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he works. He works at the um, at the place where the where the planes are. I, how does it work that not there's not a chick alive who knows what her dad does? First off, how's that? I mean, really, I, I'm, if I pulled Chelsea Clinton uh, out of her room uh, five years ago and asked her what her dad did, I, I don't know. Oh, you know he seems to be doing okay. We got a huge house, <laughs> huge. I mean, it's so big the helicopter lands on the front lawn. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm not sure. He's a snappy dresser. I don't ask questions. Hmm. I love it when the women butcher their father's military career. That's right. the saddest part to me. The guy, the guy could have uh, flown uh, A4s and F4s off of carriers and NAM and had like 110 
combat missions under his belt and then went on to fly with the Blue Angels for six years. <laughs> and they'd be like, he's in this, uh, I think he was a whack. <laughs> I don't know what he did. I think he cooked or something. I don't know. What, what is that? What is it that there's complete lack of interest in uh, all things? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How, how can they not know what's going on all the time, Drew? There's a thing. It makes noise. It's in my room. It talks. I don't know what it does. I don't, is it a <laughs> clock? I, I don't know. Is it an alarm? I, 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 I don't know. It's my sister's. Okay. Let's take ourselves a little break here, Drew. What do you say? I'm ready. I say, Annie, get a little therapy and uh, find out what that goddamn thing is in your room and tell me all about it next time you call. And we'll be right back after this. Hey, yo, Loveline. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is in uh, Washington, D.C. tonight. And uh, we'll be back in here on Sunday night. But uh, we got nice. no problems, right, buddy? Good times. Good times. All right, let's roll along. I'm looking for a good one here. Here we go. Jared. Yes. What's up? Uh, first of all, Adam. Yeah. Uh -oh. I called a couple nights ago, and thank you so much. Um, I manage the band, The Angry Neighbors. Yeah. And uh, you... Oh, you're, and you're the manager? Well, I also play in it. Oh, okay. It's 14. Right. But I do more work as the man. I see. And you, I, it was when Unwritten Law was there. Uh huh. And you guys just praised the band, talked about how it was great that we were pissing everybody off. Yeah. And uh, since then, we've had 800 new visitors to the website. That's We've had a great. bunch of people buy CDs from everywhere in the U.S. And just thank you so uh, much. All right, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, that's what I want to do. I want to. I want to make 14 year olds rich. There we go. That's my plan. He didn't even give the website out. Melissa? Hi. You're 25? Yes. What's up? Okay. First off, I want to tell you, you know how you feel about ketchup on hot dogs? Huh? Ketchup you know on hot dogs? Yeah, I don't trust those people. Yeah, okay. Well, I just want to tell you, first off, my boyfriend heats ketchup on pork chops, roast, you name it, heats ketchup on it. <laughs> well, let me let me explain this. Uh, the, the more... Look... What, what a dog will eat anything, right? <laughs> Dogs are stupid, right? You do the math. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. And, and I don't like the ketchup on the hot dog person, and I don't like the thick crust pizza person either. Oh, yeah, I use a thick crust and stuffed crust, too. Two, uh, two, sign, two sure signs of uh, stupidity. <laughs> the thinner you like your pizza, the smarter you are, Drew. Do you, are you aware of this? Uh, the thinner, I think there's a point of a diminishing return, right? There's a point at which it starts going down again. Uh, yeah, the but... Cracker thin pizza? Well, no, uh, retarded. Okay, okay, I don't want to eat it off of wax paper, but you yeah. know what I'm saying. But you yeah. know what, Drew? Normal, normal pizza. I, I, could, I, could, I could outdo any IQ test by simply doing a food IQ test, because I'll <laughs> tell you how smart... No, it's, it's a food preference test. I will... What food do you like? That's right. All I got to do is on this table... I'll put the uh, thick crust pizza, the ketchup with the hot dogs in the Mountain Dew and see how many utards come a-running. And then I'll do the math after that. Very easy to do. All right, so uh, what did uh, the hell she want? She didn't, she didn't ask anything yet. No. What was she on, line three? Yeah. Melissa? Yes. All right, so uh, your boyfriend said, said you lied. No, I say he lied. No. See, okay, here's the story. I found out on a computer through like court records and stuff that my brother recently had a marijuana charge. And my brother and my boyfriend are really, really good friends. And so as soon as I got off the computer or whatever, I ran outside them all. So my brother had a marijuana charge, huh? And he said, no, I don't know nothing about it. And I said, you swear. And he was looking right at me. He's all, yes, I swear to God. Well, does, he, does, he, does he smoke a lot of pot himself? Yes. Okay, addicts lie, period, all the time. Well, addicts lie when, uh, everyone lies when no, no, but addicts chicks come running and get in their face. Uh -huh. Okay, well, get this part. Well, wait, I don't get the part about your brother. Aren't you talking about your brother? Yeah, my brother. Or, aren't well, you talking your... about your boyfriend? Yeah, my boyfriend lied about my brother. He, why does he I know think... anything about your brother? Here's, here's the part that uh, makes our callers extra yeah, super right, stupid. Right, right. They do the whole non sequitur thing as if we're very versed in Melissa's life. That oh well, mm -hmm. the brother and him were roommates for a long time, and they got yeah. busted for dealing weed yeah. back in '99. And except he we don't get that history. Yeah, brother, my brother. Yeah, 
the he- what's your brother have to do with your boyfriend? I am not stupid. I said my brother and my boyfriend are really good friends. Mm, I missed that part. Yeah, I said that for sure. Yeah, you so said really it in good your friends. Mind. So when I asked him, he said no. He knew nothing, and he swore. And then like five minutes later, my okay. brother pulls up, yeah. and I'm all, I heard you had a marijuana charge. And he said, Brant told you, or my boyfriend told uh, you. Okay, but understand that guys don't want to get in the middle of things, especially as it, when, as it pertains to family. Mm. And that ain't exactly lying. You know well, what I mean? This is between you and your brother. You shouldn't go running at your boyfriend who's friends with your brother. And you end up driving a wedge between your brother and this guy, too. So I'm wrong? Well, I'm just saying, why, why are you running around confronting everyone? You, you know? I wasn't confronting anybody. I just thought I had a dime to drop, you know, a cover to pull. I was. All right, well, look. Well, well, yeah, I agree with that. It's sort of bizarre, but your boyfriend lied. That's it. That's what he did. He lied. Yeah, so should I be yes. mad or not? No. Yes, I think you should. I think no, I, I, don't think you, I don't think you should because I'll tell you what. There's certain things I know that uh, my girlfriend wants to talk about that have to do with other people. And you know what? I just say, I, uh, I don't know, or I will lie. I, and, and guys should lie because, you know what? It's not your place, really, to talk about this. Now, there are creative ways of doing it. Drew would suggest you say, I don't know. If you want to talk about this, you should talk to him. But that's the same as saying he did it. Mm-hmm. The, she's like a little, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Melissa's okay, but she's not great. I expected to hear a smoke alarm going off. <laughs> That's okay. right. All right, but did, here's a, here's here's don't don't make it a don't make a career out of trying to get your boy catch your boyfriend in lies. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. I don't like him lying. I don't like you working so hard trying to catch him in a lie. Oh, it was the boyfriend. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. And uh, you know what, Drew? Yeah. That's no lie. Oh, dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, should yeah, drop yeah. trial. <laughs> Dr. Drew is in uh, Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Going to be back here. Oh, who cares? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. By Sunday. And uh, then he'll uh, be on uh, Sunday night. Yeah. And uh, good times, everybody. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All right. Let's talk to uh, Jay, who's 29. Jay? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm Jay. And uh, my question is about my uh, girlfriend. She's a... Uh recently aborted our child and she says it's because she uh, had suppressed memories from her brother molesting her when she was younger what does that have to do with aborting a child she claimed that she thought that the child would be molested by her current son who uh he's about three she was afraid that as they grew up that eventually that would happen it would repeat itself has he has that child been abused by an adult no, the child's never been abused. Mm-hmm. No, I, I've helped her raise the child for two years. Yeah, well, she's hmm. just, man, Drew, there's nothing rational. And, yeah, and did you know, did she go out and I, get an abortion? I, I, I told her I didn't support that at all, and I told her I wanted to get married. Right. And, and she went out and got an abortion. She went out and got an abortion, and she said it was because she had these memories that came back all of a sudden. She didn't, yeah. she didn't know where it came from, and it, at the same time... It, I knew this brother, and I, I, you know, had Christmas dinner with him, and I took his kid out to trick or treat, and I, I can't believe it. And I think it's just because she doesn't want to be with me that she made this story up. Doesn't want to be with you? Well, because I, I got more serious when I heard that she was pregnant. And true, the way you worded that is like, uh, like you were in love with Jay too, and you no. couldn't imagine anybody not being in love with Jay. It was more like how you drop your wife and run away with Jay in a second. A little bit of how dare you, this poor woman is having these repressed memories, and you make it all about you. Well, I mean, the guy's a little bit angry and a little bit hurt about uh, hurt. the uh, fact that she aborted his child. So I'm with him on that one, Drew. And, you know, Jay's probably n- not a, a psychology major. I mean, it's hard yeah. to read this guy. Yeah. And not you, Jay, but I mean, the brother, the brother could have molested her and then went on to sort of seem very normal. 
Mm -hmm. It's not like you get a windbreaker when you molest people that says, you know, kiss me, I've molested. And if it really is a repressed memory, sometimes that can be confusing or distorted, and it can be sort of blamed on someone, and in fact, somebody else was the perpetrator. So. Any way you slice it, though, Jay, your, your girlfriend is a handful. Yeah. There's issues, big mm -hmm. time. I, I've gotten really involved because I've been with her for two years and I've gotten really attached to her son, but I don't think I should just stay in the situation because I'm attached to her son. Well, uh, I, 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 can, I think you should, Well, <laughs> frankly. Well, here's the thing, Jay. Um, th this woman is, is probably fairly chaotic, your girlfriend, that is. But she wasn't before she got pregnant. Well, mm, you just didn't see it. She has a son that you you sort of raised as your own when yeah. the child was of one year of age. Yeah, that that's yeah. that's chaotic. Yeah, I mean, unless the guy died a hero in Desert Storm. No, he didn't, he was never on the scene. Right. Okay, so that's that, chaos. That, that's I mean that's not that's not crazy crazy chaos by today's standards. But when you have a, a one year old and no one no no daddy around. That's a little bit. There's a little energy there. There's a little something going on. Yeah. And then you come in and pick up the pieces, and uh, she mm -hmm. kind of pulls this one now. Now, it, somebody that, though, has she sort of had a-hole boyfriends all along until you? The last guy, the reason why she, she left him was that when she got pregnant, she found out that he had another girl pregnant, and that's why that didn't work out. All right. See, so she's been going for these a-holes up until now. Right. Well, and I, I wouldn't like to think that. Well, that's what ha what happens is women that that tend to go for those kinds of guys are acting something out, and when they get with a nice guy who's genuinely available, it freaks them out, and they do they, they inadvertently sabotage the relationship. All right, so Jay, I mean, I, I don't want to make it. It's all about me, but Jay, she she kept the child from a man that was an a hole, and yeah, and and then I I tried to to be the so good here guy. We, here we go, Adam. Yeah, hey Drew, remember Let's the speech I gave last night about all you crazy effed up goddamn broads. Yep. Given plenty of sex, no blame and no responsibility to the a-hole guys and mm -hmm. beating the crap out of the nice guys that are trying to make a go of the family. Yep. This, this is, is, this this is, is just this more is, of that. This is that, but she's really flipped out by intimacy. She can't tell. Yes. Either. Okay, Jay. Yeah. Listen to me and listen to me good. Yeah. You are not equipped emotionally to deal with a chick like this because this chick is a handful. And she's a mess, and she got scrambled a little bit. This is going to be a tough, tough job for you. If you love the child, that's great. I respect that. Mm -hmm. And if you want to make a go at it with her, she's going to have to get a little therapy. Because if, if this is true, I mean, you can say to her, listen, I'm not blaming you for the abortion. I understand you were molested by your brother. But if, if in fact, this is all true, then you need some therapy. Right. You because you will screw up this kid. Yeah. Okay. That's it. She's got to get therapy. And Jay, if she gets kooky, you got to just walk. Okay. All right. Um, it, the part that breaks my heart is the two-year-old. Yeah. See, I I, don't, I wouldn't give him the just walk recommendation. I would say hang in on behalf of that kid till the kid's at least eight or ten. And I mean, that kid needs a steady relationship for a long time. Well, it, was it a boy? Yeah. Oh, then stay in, because I don't want him to stab me. If it was a chick, I say move on. She'll be a stripper, a porn star. Society will be that much richer. Regina? Yeah? You're uh, 14? Uh-huh. What's up? Um, I wanted to know if um, putting, like, absorbing hairspray, kind of, like, in through my skin, is it, like, would it give me the same effects if I huffed it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just put the uh, the uh, can up your ass? It just shut it off in there? Yeah. Explode it? Yeah. Well, what's going on here, Drew Regina? What is going on? You're, you're hoofing uh, hairspray? No. Um, okay. I've been cutting myself for about like a year. Mm-hmm. And like two weeks ago or something, I just, um, after I did it, I just, I kind of rubbed hairspray into it. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? I don't know. What kind of hairspray? Um, like Vidal Sassoon or something Ooh. like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it just, it kind of like, I don't know, it didn't really hurt, but it just, I kind of got like this rush mm -hmm. and like a, a couple, you know, like right now, they're kind of the scars. Yeah. I'm kind of healing over and they're all like purple and puffy. Mm-hmm. And it looks like cool. And I wanted to know if like, 
like because it's in me. No. But I you, like who, who is treating you for your behaviors? Huh? What's what's going on here? Who's who's treating you for this cutting? Nobody. Okay, you got to do that. It's not cool to have big scars, big keloid scars on your forearms. Not cool. It's not good for you to put hydrocarbons into your soft tissue. Okay, this is this is really over the top inappropriate behavior. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What, and to be what's thinking up? it's cool. What's up with you? I don't you know. Mad at your parents? Yeah, I guess so. What are they doing? They make money. Um, sure. I mean, okay. what do they do for a living? I know you don't know what your dad does, but what, what's your mom I know do what for? My dad does. What? What? My dad's a blackjack dealer. Oh, really? Yeah. I guess that's specific. I guess you'd have to know that. Yeah, and my mom's like um, a secretary, I think. Ooh. Okay. So uh, your parents—they're—they're they're busy. They don't pay attention to you. Well, my mom is. She's really abusive, and. What kind of abuse? She she hits me. Oh, she mm -hmm. does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still, at age, at age 14. Mm-hmm. What is she, uh, Mexican, Italian? What is she? Or Asian. Asian? Asian. Yeah. <laughs> that explains the blackjack. Why, why are they so attracted to the car dealing, the Asians, Drew? <laughs> and one day I'm going to find out an answer to that. Is it the numbers? You should, if your mom does that, you should call Child Protective Services, Regina. This is really damaging for you. You know what drives me nuts, Drew? Mm. When uh, I I draw the uh, I draw like the six and the three I got a nine so I do the hit me hit me and the guy keeps flipping the cards and then I bust and he starts gathering the cards and I haven't done the math yet <laughs> and I'm not sure where I'm at for all I know this guy this guy's giving me the shiv you know maybe I got twenty one maybe I got twenty but he flipped six cards so fast and did the goddamn math so fast and he's collecting all. Mm -hmm. And I'm always too embarrassed to go, oh, oh, oh wait a minute, go. hold on, Hop Singh, not so fast. You're like taking your fingers wide. Trying to screw the round eye again. Yeah, oh, one Mississippi. Uh, hold on, I got to take my shoes off. I'm out, of, I'm out of digits. Oh, okay, you win this time. <laughs> okay, so listen, Regina, you, uh, you got to call the uh, Child Protective Services if your mom's beating on you. Hmm. Well, it's been going on since I was like really little, and yeah, but it's it's making you cut on yourself now, and you're it's screwing why, yourself yeah, up. Well, why things are like, a mess now? About getting help or whatever. It's yeah. like it's not like I do it like deep enough to. It doesn't matter. You're having it. You're in. You're well, in pain. I know. I know why I do it. So why? Why, why do you do it? Because of like I just had this, I just had lots of problems. Like when I was eight until I was ten. From 8 to 10, my uncle just, like, touched me and stuff. Mm. And then... Does anybody in the family know about that? No. No? Mm-mm. No, right, So there's another thing you got going here. All right, listen, sweet pie. How are you doing in school? I'm good in school, actually. You are? Yeah. Hey, that's that Asian gene. <laughs> All right, listen now, baby. Mm. Uh, you you, you got to take care of yourself. I, I, uh, bad things have been done to you. I'm sorry to hear that. But that doesn't mean you're bad. and doesn't mean you should do bad things to you. You're a smart person. You sound a lot uh, sharper than uh, most our callers. You're doing good in school. you got to really get it together for the next few years, get through high school, and go off to college and leave this mess far behind. And I, I know it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be that much harder if you're cutting on yourself and screwing with yourself. Do you have friends? Do you have things you like to do? Do you have interests? I mean, y you got to focus hard on pursuing everything that's sort of positive and doesn't involve hurting you. And in the meantime, you got to talk to a counselor at school and uh, throw yourself on their mercy. You really do, Regina. You know what was funny, Drew? Huh. You know I don't like to uh, stereotype. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not you. That's not no, my style. Have, oh, not your style. No. But, but you know how the stereotypes uh, very rarely disappoint? Yeah. I played pool today with, a, uh, with a, the woman they call the Black Widow. She's a, a very, very attractive uh, Asian woman who was like uh, ranked number one in uh, women's pool for uh, many a year. She's still a young woman. And she's, I think, ranked number four now. Have you seen no. this woman? No. And I don't expect you have, Drew, because you've seen nothing ever, ever, right. ever. Right. If I brought up, 
If I said uh, there's this round orb that comes out at night, it hovers over the midnight sky, we call it the moon. Have you seen this, Drew? Oh, no. No, no. No. Now you'd say, now I've seen the 76 ball. <laughs> is that what you're talking? No, no. This is, this. Uh, sometimes it's full, other times what I, they call I've present. Heard, no, heard I've heard talk of this heard tale. moon, <laughs> but I've never seen the, the right, right, yeah. sphere. Yeah. So yeah, that that's 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 what I'm 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 positive if I brought that up some years ago that would have been your response. But uh -huh. this woman is a is a attractive, long legged Asian woman who dresses in black and shoots pool like uh, you know, she's the best in the world, uh -huh. and she's kind of hot. And they call her the Black Widow. It's kind of thing where you're flipping through the channels you see on ESPN two late at night, and she's wearing her uh, silky black outfit and beating the crap out of everybody. But still, the stereotype doesn't work. Asian woman hustling pool doesn't seem right. You know what I'm saying? So Not, what happened? What so I, I said to her, I said I was a little bit confused, and uh, I just. But obviously, she was she was ranked number one when she was like 21 years old. And if you're going to be ranked number one in the world shooting pool, well, then it's it, it stands to reason you start playing at seven, right? Right, right. Right? And you had yeah. a pool table in your house, yet that does not gel with the Asian stereotype at all. So I said to her, now, when did you start playing pool? And she said, I snuck out of the house and started playing at uh, 18. And I was oh. like, well, snuck out of the house. Yes, yes. We, my parents uh, made me play the piano <laughs> for about 10. And I thought, yes. <laughs> yes. Violin for three It's years. all coming together now. <laughs> now this is perfect. Now, of course, of course you didn't have a pool table in your house. Of course you had a piano in your house. Even though you're the number one female pool player in the world, because you're Asian, the stereotype trumps even the number one <laughs> ranking, and you must have a piano in your house and not a pool table. Do you see how right the stereotype is that it can almost never be foiled? That even someone who's number one at 21 didn't have a pool table because she was Asian? In three years, she became the best in the world? Apparently. Well, wow. I, I guess when you uh, have, a, have a gift for something. Wow. But yes, but see, see, Drew, the stereotype trumps all. <laughs> trumps all. Every time. What Asian family has a pool table? But yet, how do you get around it? She must have had a pool table. She's number one. Huh. Nope, a piano. That's all you need to know. All right. All right. Yeah. And listen, people say all the time, stop stereotyping. But my thing is, like, how do I get to the truth if I don't stereotype? I'll never know what's going on. Amanda. I would have been wrong and thought she had a pool table in her house growing up. You see, I would have been wrong if I didn't stereotype. I would have been wrong. How do I get to the truth if I don't stereotype? Yeah. Oh, 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 my God. I, you, know what, you know what I'd like to do, Drew? Yeah. I would like to, one day, I would like to recreate everything I say in Italian. I recreate everything I say. No, and then I would like to play it next to Mussol some of Mussolini's speeches and see <laughs> if it's close. <laughs> I think a lot of it would sound close. What do you think? Oh, oh, I, absolutely. Okay. Hey, Amanda. Yeah? Turn down whatever you got to turn down or, or do whatever off. you got to do. Okay, it's, it's down, it's off. Even, even in German, by Hitler, I'm sure it would be the same thing. Yeah, right? he, he was probably talking about Asian shooting pool that whole time. I, I don't know. When he was up on the pulpit and he was making a fist and pounding on it, he could have been talking about Asians and pianos. We don't know. Maybe even the heated sofa. Uh -huh. I'd like to, they never do really translate though. So for, no. how do we know he was sending a negative message? He could have now just, you're scaring me. Well, I'm just saying he could have said he could have been saying like the half track and parking lot C has its lights on. I mean, maybe he was making a PSA announcement. Hmm. He could have been talking about what they were going to eat. I, I don't know what he was saying. That's my point. Let's not rush to judgment. That's all I'm saying. All right. Amanda. Amanda. Hello. Hi. What's up? I, I'm, okay, Amanda. Yeah. Turn down your crap in the background and focus. I turned it off. Okay. What's going on? Okay. Um, is this Adam and Drew? <sighs> Go ahead. Give her another chance. <laughs> no. She's you'll gone. like this one. You'll like it. No, no, no you'll listen, like it. Amanda, hey. you sit and rot for about uh, 30 minutes, and then we'll get back to you. Uh, I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I uh -huh. can't go through that dance. Jody? Yes. You're 26? Yes. What's up? Um, I have a question. I'm thinking about getting the copper T IUD. Mm-hmm. And I know the strings hang down a little past the cervix. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if I use the Instead soft cup 
if it's going to pull on the strings or dislodge it. Why would you use that also? For the periods. Hmm? All right. The, 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 the copper IUD has strings on it? Yes. To get it out? No, to make no, sure no. The it actually has a little wire that sticks out of the cervix. You can the guy can feel it when he's right. Well, right. some guys can. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I, I'd have to get a like jump from a three-story building with my penis out to feel that <laughs> copper wire. <one. laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little wire, and it's so uh, when it comes time to pull this the IUD out, it's something you so you grab onto and pull it out. With. Who's you? The the doctor. Really? The doctor is yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you want to use something like this cup? Yes. And, and the cup is a birth control no. device? It's a, like no, it's, it's for when you're having your period. Like, like, right, like, a, a, like a tampon. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and it catches it and you pull it out later on. Wait a minute now. How come I don't know about this, Drew? I mean, I, many people do. <laughs> how long has it been around? A few years. But, you know, just like three or four years? I mean, it's yeah, relatively yeah. new? Yeah. And it, instead of putting a tampon up in there... You uh, put this little cup in there. And you form a seal around the cervix, like with a diaphragm. Right, and it stops everything up. Right. And the blood builds up in there. Right. And then when you get home that day, you uh, drain it out and throw it in the dishwasher, right? Uh, I wouldn't reuse it. Oh, you don't reuse it? No. Yeah. Why not reuse it? Like, an, <laughs> like um, you know, like a, sp uh, not a sponge, but a, uh, not an IUD. What am I thinking of, Drew? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. Thank you. See, Drew doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, why not like a diaphragm? You know, just rinse it out and put it back up in there? No? Uh, no. Why, why are you using this instead of a tampon? I don't like tampons. Why not? They're uncomfortable. Okay, and it's more comfortable? You can't feel it. How come this hasn't caught on, Drew? I don't know. Okay. All right, baby. So uh, you want to know if the copper wire that's hanging off of the IUD is going to interfere with this thing? Or if, if when I go in to get the cup out, if it's going to move the strings and shift the IUD. What about it, Drew? What, what does your doctor say about this? I haven't asked him yet. I don't think they would be. You, you, I'm not sure you can use it with the IUD. Well, what about the tampon? You can use that with the IUD. Yeah, you can definitely use a tampon. Well, what's the difference? But I don't see how you can get this thing to position if the if the string is there. But doesn't a tampon go further up? Mm, it does, but it just it's it just it doesn't have to be in a certain position. You know what I'm saying? You can move around. Yeah, but if you're going to the point, if you're going far enough up to hit the copper from the IUD, then it doesn't really matter what you're doing. You, you're interrupting something or screwing with something. What? We're uh, not communicating. We're not? Well, no. some, uh, but, Drew, you dropped off about uh, two minutes ago. I don't know what happened to you. you hit no, the I'm wall, trying to figure tired. out what... I'm trying to figure out... No, no, I'm just trying to figure out what she's, what she's up to here, because it's just not a routine sort of situation. She hasn't talked to her doctor about it. She's well, I think she's calling you. Person. Well, she's got uh, the I, IUD. She's got the copper wire hanging down in the IUD. And now she wants to use the cups. She wants to use that cup instead of the tampon, and, and she's, she's worried, worried that, that she's going to upset the IUD no, and uh, no, not you, have it you, be you, effective. You, you can't upset the IUD. That that is that's wedged in there. I just I don't see how the cup's going to stay in place. But that's why. all right. Hey Jody. Yes. So don't worry about upsetting the IUD. Okay. 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 All, right. all right. And what? What about when she gets into different positions, like on top or wheelbarrow or a reverse cowgirl or doggy? <laughs> the IUD is going to be in different positions. Is it still effective? It's still, it, it's within the you you. I you get that diagram. No. Out it's in the uterus. It's wedged inside her body in the uterus. Not. In the vagina, in the uterus. And these things are coming back now, IUD. Yeah, they are. They had some trouble with them some yeah. years back? Fertility problems, infections in the tubes. I, I, they still scare me. I saw so many problems with them. But the data looks good on them now. Well, that, it would seem like they wouldn't bring them back unless they had a handle no, I mean, on them. No, there, they? Was, there was huge liability with it. Yeah, no, they, they've checked it out pretty carefully again. All right, let, let, we got to go to break, but let me uh, hit Chip real fast. Chip? Hello. 23? Yes. The uh, Sherpa. Yeah. The Sherpa guide are uh, guides that uh, lead folks up uh, Mount Everest. It, the Himalayan Indian tribe, right? Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, they hang out there around the base, and uh, they don't need a whole lot of oxygen, those people. I see. I see. Oh. So, so you, if, if, you, if you went to, uh, where is that? Somewhere around Nepal or something? Mm-hmm. Where is yes. that Mount Everest? Nepal? I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. Well, Drew, say you don't know then. Instead of acting confused. No 
I know, Chip, but you don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I mean, hang on there. Mount Everest. It's it's uh, between like Nepal and it's on it's on the border somewhere. Right. Northern India. Hmm. All right. The point is, if you went there and you want to do uh, go go up to uh, Mount Everest, you get yourself a Sherpa guide. Yes, right. true. Or a whole bunch of them. Yeah, get a whole bunch because uh, you got to have somebody who's uh, you know carrying your crap. Right. For me, I I would actually have them carry me like Cleopatra. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be a great publicity stunt. Right. My stunt is is I want to be the first person to uh, make the ascent on Mount Everest while being carried. But without your feet touching the ground. Right. And, yeah. I, and okay. I would arrange a, 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 um, a Bennington commercial. I would one of every ethnicity except for my own to carry me to the top of Mount Everest. It would be, uh-huh. be a great publicity stunt, wouldn't it? <laughs> great way to use your time. <laughs> And I mean, you could probably make you could probably make a run during the summer. You know, you you get a yeah. I would I would have a sponsor make me like like whoever made the whoever made the blimp for the guy who owns uh, Virgin Airlines. You know, mm-hmm. wh- whoever makes that balloon, I have make me like a special um, a carrying. You know, it, it's uh, they would be essentially pallbearers. Essentially, I make me a, a special like titanium coffin with a stereo in it. You know, like a roll bar in case there was trouble, nice. an airbag. And I'd, you know, I'd pad it, and I'd, uh, I'd, I'd have it catheterized. I'd have, I'd have the urine and fecal matter just fall out <laughs> of the thing. And we'd do it during the summer, and I'd have, I'd have oxygen and uh, Mozart pumped into this thing that I was being carried. And I would get to the top, I'd be the first person. I, oh, oh, better yet, better yet. When I got off the plane in, uh, in uh, Nepal, I would, I would never touch the ground. Ever. I would never touch the ground. I would have people carry me to my hotel room and put me in a limousine and everything. I'd be the first person to set foot on the top of Mount Everest without ever setting foot in the country that it was in. Did you just eat about a gram of mushrooms? No, but I think this is a great publicity okay. stunt. Okay, good. I could wear a Loveline t-shirt. This would be huge, Drew. You see, you're not a visionary. That's your problem. I have a little man show uh, insignias on the outside of the coffin. <laughs> yeah, I could get sponsorships. Oh, they'll be. We'll have crane canker puppets throughout the episode. Right, Th- right. Some of them will be carrying you. Right. Oh, that'd be great. Oh man, this would be great. Okay, we'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be uh, right back. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. He's in uh, Washington, uh, D.C. And uh, phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Uh, yeah. I was just talking to uh, phone screener uh, Brian. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, uh, the Sherpas are uh, from Tibet. Oh, Tibet. Okay. Yeah, I was saying Nepal. Mm-hmm. But then I know Mount Everest is in between Tibet. And Maybe something. Nepal. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, see, I'm not there to just pick up the dictionary and look it up. Yeah, what would you look up, though? I can go on the web and look it up. All just right, look genius. Up, uh, look up, you know. Then I've got a computer Everest. where you are. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, do that, would you? Yeah, but then you'll start yelling at me for not concentrating. No, nah, go ahead. All right. Go ahead and do it now. You talk to Amanda in the meantime. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hello? Amanda, I say uh, Mount Everest, uh, 26,332 feet. Nope. Amanda? Yeah? All right, Jatine. Yeah. You get uh, spontaneous orgasms during the day. Yeah, Start. and I don't, I don't even know why. And nothing, nothing's there to turn me on or anything. It just happens out of nowhere. Are you on any medication? No. Hmm. Mm. And uh, does it? Uh, let's see. Do you know what an orgasm is? Have you ever had one with a guy? Yeah. You have. Yeah. Fourteen had an orgasm with a guy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, see, girls that they have it, it's like, yeah, what are you talking about? Of course. Of course. How could I not? Okay. They fall right out of me. And it feels the same? Yeah. All yeah, right. that, that's, she's one of those types. That, that, yeah. That's, the again, the, the spectrum of the female. That's a nice, uh, that, that's a nice little, um, little perk. Are, are you a virgin? Yeah. Wait, how did you have the orgasm with the guy? Or he was just around during the time you had it when you were just no. standing around? No. We were just messing around. Wow. You got an older sister for me? Not too much older, just like six months. Oh, I just think how that can make can add to your laziness. I mean, yeah, because I, this while while it's raining orgasms over at uh, Amanda's place, I can't get an orgasm out of one with a, a flat bar and a single jerk. 
<laughs> but I'm, I'm really... You know what a single jerk is, Drew? No, it's like you pull your... Mini sledgehammer. Mini sledge. All right, 29,028 feet. You ready? 29,000. Yeah. Wow. All right, boy, that's, uh, a, that's a high peak. But like you'll be happy to know it lies on the border between Nepal and Tibet. Good times. Good I'll times. tell you, me and uh, phone screener Brian, what a, uh, what a team we would make tooling around in his uh, bench-seated, uh, beat-up S10 pickup truck, drinking a sixer at the park, cruising chicks. Oh, yeah. Talking about trivia. <laughs> Amanda? Uh, yeah? Hey, baby. All right, so you're happy. She burping. She burped. <laughs> you're all class. So you're, uh, you're having. Everything falls out of her. You're having yourself right? an orgasm. That's Burps, fine. Orgasms, whatever. That's just you, baby. There's no, is there anything wrong with me? No. Are you doing, are we exercising or anything when it happened? No. Then you're fine. No, some women are just have that capacity that they really, they can, you know, just tighten the muscles down there and pow. All right. Let's Others, we talked to somebody earlier this evening, she couldn't, yeah, pry it out. No. Let's talk to, uh, who are we talking to? Aaron. Aaron. Yes, sir. You're 22. Yes, sir. What's up? Uh, I've been in a relationship for about mm, two, and, two and a half years. You know, about six months into the relationship. I don't know what happened, but uh, I, I started not being able to get, like, an erection uh, whenever I wanted to. Before that, I could get an erection, like, like easy. Before, what do they do now, tell me? They removed a testicle? Yeah, they removed the testicle on that. Uh, Why? Why? 16. Why? Because uh, I guess it got twisted and it was born with a piece of skin that attaches to your scrotum or whatever. Right, it got a torsion. And so it yeah. twist, twists and dies, basically. That's pretty painful, huh? Yeah, it was, uh, it's a long story. <laughs> well, tell people about it because it's actually important thing for people to know how to sort of recognize. Okay, well, I was sitting there uh, with my cousin up in this, up this bedroom watching TV and... <laughs> It, it would, it'd go away periodically. Uh, I mean, sometimes it would throb, then it would go away before that. And then and sometimes it would really hurt, and then it would go away. But this time it just kept on hurting and hurting and hurting. And I figured it would go away if I shipped it or moved, you know, because sometimes it would go away if I did that. But this time I just, my cousin thought I was uh, being a dummy. I just started uh, curling up on the floor, you know. And then finally I figured, no, i got to go to the hospital. It just uh, hurt so bad. But right. Now, there's, that, nothing, there's nothing about the removal of that testing that should affect your... I tell you, Drew, this, Aaron should cut a PSA for this. Yeah, right? was, uh, again, another just glorious, <laughs> colorful <laughs> image. Of, Actually, well. I, thought, I think it makes me uh, perform better now. I mean, it, it used to anyways, but... Uh, but you're having trouble... Because I could, cause I could you, go a little longer, I thought, but... Uh, but yeah, now, I think it's me. Have I lost interest? I mean, because sometimes... It's, I can rejuvenate, you know what I'm saying, take a break. Right. And then after three, three, I can go for like three days perfectly normal, then I'll just lose interest again, maybe rejuvenate another three days and go again like normal. Mm. Uh, right, hold that on. Just, that just seems odd to me. Yeah. You have, well, we have one woman you're rejuvenating with, Aaron? Yes. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Didn't sound thrilled about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> yeah. Are you in love? Uh... See, it's a thing too. I think I'm maybe I'm just losing interest. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, you well. don't you don't sound like uh, you're ready to break out into song about this uh, young lady. <laughs> yeah, would, would that, would that be? Like you had a caller earlier, and uh, it was kind of messed up. And had this guy, had a, this guy had a kid with her or something. Right. And, right. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, she 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 has a she's a bipolar manic depressant, mm -hmm. and she takes Escalus. Do you take and, any uh, medications? I've been. No, I don't take anything. All right, so uh, you, your old lady's a handful. Yeah, and I've been trying to, you know, I, I loved her in the beginning, and uh, I just wanted to help her out. I think that's why oh, I've boy. been here so long. Right. Well, that's how long, you're 22, how long you been with her? Two years, two years, about three months. Okay. Well, and you've got to be honest about this and maybe does she? Yeah. Her. Does she have a kid? No, but uh, she's a compulsive liar, too. All right, uh, all right, no. listen. And she said... All right, that's enough. Listen, yeah, that, that's a problem. You now. don't need to talk to us to know you need to break up with someone. And, and, and um, Drew. Yeah. I know this. I, I feel this way. And, I, you know, whenever you're, you feel it's like a food you really like, mm -hmm. and uh, when you realize that someone else doesn't like lasagna you're, you're or cashews or something yeah. like that, you get pissed off. Yeah. 
Uh, this is why I feel about relationships. Isn't it better to be alone than to be with a serious handful? I mean, to yeah, be... Yeah, but remember, a lot of people need that. They, they seek that out. I know chicks they like need projects. that, but the guys no, some, need yeah, that, yeah, too? Some guys are very codependent. And I'll tell you, uh, let me just finish with Aaron, though. He, it sounds like there has been a real change in his performance that may be not just because of the lack of enthusiasm about the relationship... He ought to get checked out just in case there's something wrong with the testosterone production in that one remaining testing. Or right. maybe a thyroid problem or a prolactin screen tumor or something else affecting his overall biology. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. a second. Hey, Drew, yeah. let me ask you a question. What? Both my, uh, my hands, uh -oh. the uh, palms of my hands, yeah. right, uh, right about the middle of the palm of my hands are, are mm -hmm. producing... Uh, mm, tumors or uh, lumps or something, you know? Remember the one I had in my writ, in my palm? Yep. yep. These are in the middle of my hands. Mm. Mm, they're getting more pronounced, and they're right in the middle of the palm of my hand, and uh, they're on both hands now. Well, let me look at it. Usually those are synovial cysts. What, what is that coming from? They're coming from the sheaths that, that surround the tendons that go out to your fingers. Yeah. The particular ones that cause your fingers to move forward, to flex. Really? Yeah, this is on the yeah. underside, and it's yeah. about an inch back from uh, where my yeah. fingers attach to my palm. Yeah. yeah, and it moves when you open and close your fingers, right? Uh, I can't, eh, not really. Not it feels really. like a little BBs under there, but it's on both hands now. Is it the fourth finger only? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, no, one of them's in the middle, and the other one's off toward the pinky side. Well, you may be getting what are called Dupuytren's contractures. Oh, well, yeah, that's there what I, I thought initially. And old Dupuytens has uh, <laughs> raised it, reared its ugly head. But why both hands, and why sort of at the same time? Because that tends to be the way that develops. And at a certain certain age, your dad have this? That sort of shortening is is or his fourth and fifth. My dad. <laughs> or his fourth and fifth fingers kind of contracted down a little bit. No, mm. no. Is this a boxing thing though? Not that I'm aware of. Why the palms of both hands? Well, though? Let me look at it. Let me look at All it. All right. Well, could you fly back tonight? I'm yeah. worried. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Justin? Come on, my God. Yeah? You're 13? Yeah. What's oh. up there, buddy? Hey, I think you should do the a publicity stunt. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And I have a question for Drew. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, is it possible for, like, real life, uh, for, like, uh, dog sperm cells to, like, if we could inject them into, like, some lady's egg cells and could make, like, a baby out of that? Like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't no? mix across species. Uh, mm-hmm. Right. Sorry, no dog baby. God, God willing, God willing, one day, Justin. Yeah. We'll be able to do that. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. Interbreed. Yeah, uh, yeah. What, what, what would you mix, Justin? I go wolf or something. Make you go werewolf. <laughs> you go, you go wolf human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wolfy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Good times. Good. Yeah. Good times, right? Good times, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd do like a, a giraffe and a catfish. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's good eating. Oh, yeah. No, that's better. I'd, I'd probably like take my two favorite foods. I would take like a cow and uh, like a uh, like a linguine. Or is that a pasta? The linguine? I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure that's a species. Oh, well, I take you know what I do? I take a cow and uh, an asparagus. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cow, that wouldn't work either. I don't plant now. I would take a cow and a ribs. Yeah. How, <laughs> now you know what I would. How I would like your favorite food and just cross it with a rhinoceros. You get more of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but ry rhino could be tough. I take a cow and a pig. All right, there you go. And uh, make a like a, a kid a pow, or a pow, a pow. That's right. I would, yes. I would, <laughs> I would write this down, Drew. I'm writing it. Cow and, cow and pig and make a pow. <laughs> and you'd have, you know, cause sometimes you go out for ribs and like you want the beef or you want the baby back oh, pork. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know, cow. man. I don't know. And they're like, well, what's it going to be? And you're like, ah, oh. I mean, the, the, the baby backs are succulent, but the, but the beef ribs so much bigger. Uh, and then the guy starts yelling at it. And he's like, mm -hmm. make a decision. He starts yelling, mow. And you're like, I don't know. And this now, you know, pow. Pow. Give me the pow. Give me a, uh, give me a half. Give me a large rack of the pow. Mm, that would be good. And listen, Drew, can't we do this now? I mean, <laughs> well... 
we got the nectarine. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean that that's like a, a peach and a plum or something, right? Yeah. Or tangerine and a and a peach. Or, I mean, I, we can make the nectarine. I don't think we, the nectarine existed a hundred years ago. If we can make a nectarine, certainly we can make a pow. We made uh, we made boysenberries out of I think I don't know blackberries and blueberries or something like that. We we huh. uh, you know Knotts did the boysenberry. Is that right? Yeah, not uh, not Knotts Berry Farm. Don Knotts. Oh, okay. Okay, no, yeah. no, Knott's Berry Farm did that. I'm just saying, some, whoever's listening, is some geneticist or something, start working on POW. I could go for that. Eat All them right. ribs. You just sit back and think about the POW while we take a break. All right. Hey, everybody. Love line. Hey, Drew. You. Just uh, spent the last 10 minutes uh, trying to hammer out uh, what uh, Knott's from Knott's Berry Farm invented. Decided uh, he crossed the uh, blackberry with the uh, raspberry, creating the boysenberry. Oh, interesting. That's, that's, what we, that's where, where we left off. I see. Well, I'll look it up on the web. You want me to? Yeah. All right, here we go. Joe? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Yeah. Uh, girlfriend, she's 21. We've been together for just over three years now. Um, and, like, two weeks ago, she started, like, bitching about, like, if we get out of the car and we start walking somewhere, if I walk a little in front of her, if I walk a, if I walk through a door before her, or like if I'm ever in front of her, she's like bitching about it being disrespectful. And it doesn't happen all the time, but I mean, I never think about it. How long has she been uh, your girlfriend? Just over three years. Three years. And how long has she been complaining like this? Like two weeks. Three and a half. Is some of this um, sort of, is she, is she from Atlanta? Is she from the South? Yeah. Is some of this sort of her expectation, you know, of her upbringing that women be treated well, a certain way? I don't way? know, but why the hell didn't it come out earlier than this? Oh, yeah, like that's interesting. I don't know. Do we care? He's walking uh, in she, front well, she's of up, her. She's up. She's angry about something. Yeah. She's every, everything you do. She's angry and irritable about. Now either she's getting depressed about something. Maybe she's on a new birth control pill or, or having some medications affecting her or something's going on in this relationship. Have a chat with her, not about who's walking through the door first, but about uh, what's going on in general. Don't attack her. Just have a chat about it. All right. The Boysen Barrier was developed in the early 1920s by Rudolph Boysen of N Napa, California. Hmm. Hmm. Considered along with the Logan Berry and the Young Berry, a variety of Blackberry. Hmm. Hmm. What the hell that Knotts of Knotts Berry Farm did? They're just canned stuff. Well, maybe he got hold of this thing and kind of claimed it as his own or something, because that would have been right about the t right time period in the 20s. All I'm saying is, is hey, come on, if they could do this, we're up to mating the pig and the cow. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. People's thing is like, no, nah, we can't do that. We don't want to play God. But I say, uh, if you can pull God off, do it. Oh, you want to take another call here, I'm Drew? I'm still quickly going through the knots. All right, go ahead. I'll take a call. All right. Chris? Boysenberry pies? Mmm. Mmm, -hmm. mm, donuts. Chris? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're 16. What's up? Huh? All Ooh, right. Whoa. So that's not about yeah. average. I guess about an average caller. Oh. oh. <laughs> Tim? Yeah, how you guys doing? Good. You're uh, 17. You want to know if Paxil's increasing your tolerance to uh, opiates. Yeah. You take opiates for fun. Yeah. What kind of opiates do you take? Buena Park is well known as the, as the home of the boysenberry. Wait a minute. <laughs> 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 this show's great. You know what this show's like? You know when you're a kid and you wanted to stay up longer, you thought you could, like, distract your parents by telling them to watch something or engage them or talk to them or something? This is what I do with Drew. I distract him so that uh, I get him, I get him, I, I really get Drew to prioritize by looking up uh, who invented boysenberries while people, are, people yeah. are ODing on the other line. Yeah. <laughs> Buena Park has been well known as the home of the boysenberry, which was created by Rudolph Boysen and Walter Knott, together with Blackberry, Red Raspberry, and Loganberry. Now, Drew, doesn't this doesn't this reinforce one more time that I'm never wrong? Never about anything. It's kind of freaking me out, in fact. Yeah, it's a, even when you look something up and it doesn't have my guy's name on it, you got to find another source. Uh, Thank you, Tim. Yeah, you're uh, anyway. You're on the Paxil, right? And you're taking the drugs too. 
Right. So you should stop taking the drugs because you're uh, already on the Paxil, which uh, suggests that uh, you have some problems and uh, that you're trying to take care of those problems. And now you're kind of compounding those problems by getting into the drugs. Well, I've been into drugs for a while. Okay. Has anybody treated your drug addiction? Uh, nope. All right, well, that's why you're depressed. You're a drug addict. Right. Drug addicts are always depressed. Well, actually, I'm taking a pack for, for uh, social and generalized anxiety disorders. Right, but, but none of that, is, any psychiatric symptoms you have when you're doing drugs are sort of uninterpretable. It doesn't matter. I mean, anything under the sun can be happening when you're doing drugs. You've got to get the drug addiction treated. The rule of thumb is you wait at least three months to treat psychiatric symptoms until somebody's well engaged in treatment. All right, I want to throw it to Young uh, Justin is from uh, Oklahoma, 15. You can't get the balls to ask out an older girl at school. Well, she's not really older. She's she's like I, a couple months older than I am. She's one of the popular girls. Huh? Did you she's describe her to uh, one of our phone screeners as older? Uh, I, she's in a higher grade than me. I see. Yeah. All right. You know, it kind of dawns on me that I'm kind of stupid for being in a lower grade than her, and I don't really want to ask her out because of it. What grade are you? I'm in. I'm going into tenth grade this year. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. You're fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, here's the deal, Justin. Do you think you have a chance? Well, like she kind of talks to me and and whatnot, but uh oh, it. She talks you t telepathically, or she actually moves her lips? Because I she believe there are girls communicating with me, but that was different. <laughs> yeah, it's is, not like one does of them. Does she have a boyfriend? It, huh? Does she have a boyfriend? N no, she was going out with this senior last year. Uh, but me and this senior didn't really get along. It was kind of a faggot, like an ape. Mm -hmm. So, the girls, uh, the girls I would uh, communicate with telepathically would command me to rape Drew. Mm. Good times. Yeah, interesting defense uh, from a from a legal standpoint. Mm-hmm. It's like Son of Sam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I cut Justin off because uh, he said her ex-boyfriend was a faggot who walked like an ape. Yeah. And uh, although I, I don't mind that kind of talk on this show, it just sort of seemed to come from nowhere, and it was yeah. kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you kind of get that vibe there, Drew? Yeah. Yes. So, here's the deal, Justin. We don't care. I don't care if the girl goes out with you or uh, well, go ahead doesn't and go out with well, you. But go ahead and ask. Why? I don't know. I don't like Justin. Okay. Don't ask. Uh, you should you should live and, and and not only that Justin with this girl but for your whole life, never ask, never his, dare. His head should grow on the ground and he should, should grow up like an onion. Grow like an onion. Yeah, they'll yeah. take a. Uh, oh boy, could I go for some uh, boys some boysenberry pie, pie right now? <laughs> Big clump of ice cream. You know what yeah. I do, Drew? I give it I give it a shot in the microwave, just Ooh. a shot about about thirty three, thirty four seconds in the microwave, then pow with the with mm. the vanilla hog and dos. Ooh. Yeah, and I start with a fork, and then I transition into a spoon. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, that's the show. That's the week. I want to thank hey, phone Adam. screener Brian. Before you think about it, I've got my telephone, so I'll call you, honey. All right, sweet. All right. Phone screener, Tara. Counting Tara, don't call me Tara. I want to thank AS. Yes, phone screener, Tara, don't call me Tara, God damn it. And uh, phone screener, Brian, for doing a great job and knowing what I'm talking about. And uh, and, and uh, semi-producer, Lauren, and, uh, and engineer, Ken, who uh, came in the last few days. Or is it the whole goddamn week? Mm -hmm. No. Maybe yeah. the last, like, three days. Filling in for Anderson and Fresh Air. I'll tell you, this guy's got fingers like... Um, Liberace. Mm. Nobody works that board like Ken. Nobody. Okay. Right. So, until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Dr. Drew saying Mahala. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.